Okay. Sorry, it went off. Okay, so I was saying that, yeah, you put in the number of segments you want. So since we, we are using the one over three rule, it has to be even. So you can't make use of odd number of segments for the one over three rule. That's why I put in even numbers here. Then I simply call the function here. Then as you can see, the, uh, we are getting actually closer to the, to the analytical solution, to the exact analytical solution. Let me put 12, let me put 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So let me do the remaining. So actually, the exact value you share. The exact value is, what's the exact value? The exact value is 1.640553. So from Excel, we got uh, 1.640553. So we are getting closer and closer. Let me put 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, done. So we're getting much closer. So like I said, as you increase the number of segments, you become much more accurate. So the exact solution was 1.640533. So let me put 40 and 50. So in order to be much more accurate. So like we're getting closer and closer to the exact solution. So this is the number of segments, then the interval or the step size. The step size to call the, to know the step size, I'll just simply call this function here. Yeah. So that function will help us to calculate the step size. So in this case, n is m2. Replace it with m2. Then, like I told you, as the, as the number of segments increases, the step size reduces. So, and you have more, you have more accuracy. So this is the way you we write the computer program to, to help us to do numerical integration using Simpson's rules. Then this, so we, we did, so this, this summary is a table of all the, of all the methods we've considered. So the trapezoidal rule is just for one segment. Like I told you, the least number of segments you can use for a trapezoidal rule is one segment. And for one segment, you need two points. You need two points. For a first order polynomial approximation, you need at least two points. And this was the formula we derived. Then for the Simpsons one over three rule, we are approximating it with the second order polynomial. So in essence, n segment. And for Second order polynomial, you need at least three points. At, at least the least number of points you need is three points. And I said that the Simpson's rule can only can only be applicable when n is even. So n should be even, like two, four, six, eight. And this is the formula. Therefore, since three over h rule, you are approximating the function with a third order polynomial. So in essence. We are using three segments. And for third order polynomial approximation, you need at least four points. You need four points for, for third order approximation. That's for the Simpsons three over eight rule. And this was a formula we worked with. And then there's another rule which 
we didn't consider, but it follows if you can understand this tree, then this one will not be an issue. So it's a fourth other polynomial approximation of the function you want to integrate. Therefore, you need five points at least. You need five points in order to do that. And it's called the Bowles rule. And this is the formula for it. So this is the Simpsons one over three rule. And since this is the Simpsons three over eight rule, and this is the Bowles rule, then uh, this one has, I don't think it has a name, is for fifth order approximation. And for fifth order approximation, you need at least six points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You need six points. And this is the formula you use. And for five points, these are the five points. One, two, three, four, five. The four points, one, two, three, four. The three points, one, two, three. Then the two points, one and two. So this is like a summary of the Newton's court closed uh, formulas you can use for numerical integration. So like I said, the Simpsons one over three rule works okay, but its only limitation is that is you can only use it when n is even. So in order to, when n is odd, all you just need to do is to divide it such that you still be able to use the Simpsons one over three rule. So the methods we've been considering so far are for, um, are for when you have equal segments, when you have equal step sizes. For all of this, yeah, you have equal segments. Like we divided, like for this example, we divided the function into equal sizes, like the interval, yeah, 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 yeah. They are the same thing, they are the same thing. So they are equal intervals. In a case where we want to use on equal intervals, it's still possible to use all these rules that we have just considered. For instance, this is a trapezoidal rule. It's just the same thing as the multiple segment. It's just that in this case, the H is not the same thing. So yeah, it's not the same thing with this. It's not the same thing with the next one. It's not the same thing with the next one. So the only difference is that you can use the other rules. The other rules apply even when the number of segments are not, are not equal. So let's use an example to illustrate what um to illustrate what I'm driving at. So now, we want to integrate that same function, that same function we've been considering since we started this class. But now, we have an equal number of segments. So we have an equal number of segments. Before, uh, on equal step sizes, before, um, the difference between this and this, this and this, was always the same thing. But yeah, the difference between these two is 0 0.12. The difference between these two is 0 0.1. The difference between these two is 0 0.1. The difference between these two is 0 0.04. The difference between these two is 0 0.04. The difference between these two is 0 0.04. The difference between these two is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 difference, 0 0.6 difference, and 0 0.1 difference. So in essence, the, the, the step sizes or the intervals, they are not equal. They are unequal. They are unequal. So we can still use the other rules. So this is your x naught. This is your x naught. This is your x1, this is your x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, x9, and x10. Want to do numerical approximation using the trapezoidal rule. 
So the the question is asking us to in, do numerical integration. Or well, we're going to use the trapezoidal rule for this question. So for the trapezoidal rule, we need just two points. So this is this is our x naught and this is our x one. So we and we've had, we are giving the value of this function at this value of x is. So these are the value of the function. And this one here is equal to x naught. This function here is equal to x naught. So x naught is equal to this. Then the value of the function at x naught f of x naught f f of x naught is given by this so similar to this so this is x1 this is x2 like like that so I want to use the trapezoidal rule is just the same thing it's just that this step sizes this step sizes or these intervals or width, they are different. So this is x naught, and this is x ten. And this is x ten. And this is x ten. So this is the, the evaluation of the function. at x10. So we have all of this. So to use the trapezoidal rule, we just need two points. But in this case, we have like 11 points. So we keep on divide out. We break it down into 10. So x0 to x1, x1 to x2, x2 to x3, x3 to x4, x4 to x5, x5 to x6 x6 to x7, x7 to x8, x8 to x9, then x9 to x10, since our final value is x10. Then the interval or the step size is different. So that's why we have h1 to h10. So for the first h1, so this is f of x0 and this is f of x1, the first h1, H1 is simply this 0 0.12 minus 0, 0.0, which is 0 0.12. Then H2 is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.22, which is 0 0.1. H3 is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.3. 0 0.22, which is 0 0.1. So in this way, you calculate all the step sizes, then you evaluate, you would use the value of the function at these instances of x. Then you sum everything together to calculate, to find the final value, which is this. So in this case, we're using the trapezoidal robot. The number of segments are uneven, before it was even and, uh, sorry, the number of segments are not the same thing. They are unequal, sorry, unequal, not uneven, unequal. So before the number of uh, the segments are equal, like H1 is equal to H2 is equal to H3, but now they are unequal. So because they are unequal, we need to like account for the inequality by specifying the exact intervals. If to say the, the intervals were the same thing, we just use this formula straight up. We just use this formula straight up because H is the interval, is the, is the step size and is the same thing throughout, like this interval is equal to this interval is equal to this interval. So we just use this formula straight up to to calculate it, but since the number of segments, the 
the segment interval is not equal. So that's why you have to de default back to the this method. So this is for single segments, so you, you account for it. So when we track the error is 2.8 percent. Then now we are asked to we compute the integral for that same table, but using Simpson's rules for where those segments are appropriate. So let me bring down this table. Let me bring it down so that I will use it to explain the solution to it. So we are asked to we are asked to do the same particular uh, question, but now before we use the trapezoid rule, but now I want to use the Simpson's rule. So this is so this is the table, and so look at this. The first two, the first two values on the table. The the difference, the the step size. 0 0.12 minus 0 is 0 0.12. Then for the next one, the difference is 0 0.1. The difference between this and this is 0 0.1. So this is the way we do it. For the first two values, we use the trapezoid rule. Because remember the trapezoid rule is a first order polynomial and you need two points. So we have two points that have the same step size. So for these two values here, yeah, we use the trapezoidal rule. Then for these three values here, they have the same step size because 0 0.22 minus 0 0.12 is 0 0.1. 0 0.32 minus 0 0.22 is 0 0.1. So these three values, these three values I highlighted, they have the same step size. So I want to ask you a question. What rule are we going to use? Remember there are three, there are three points. And being that there are three points, N is even because you have two segments here. Three points for two segments. So I'm asking, the class now what rule can we combine together in order to solve it for the integral between these three points that's my question to the class So I'm awaiting a response. What rule can we use for these three points? What rule can we use for these three points? What single rule can we use for these three points? Okay. Okay. Someone has replied me. Do do we have any other I want more I want more responses. You have three points. And I told you that for three points is a second order polynomial. Because for second order polynomial you need at least three points. Okay. Any other any other contributions? Any other contributions? Those who would have responded, I can see your responses. So for these three points, the question is asking us to use things in rule. So for these three points, they have the same interval. They have the same step size. 
because 0 0.22 minus 0 0.12 is 0 0.1. 0 0.32 minus 0 0.22 is 0 0.1. So you have three points here. And for three points, we can use the second order polynomial to approximate the integral. So what, okay. All right, so for those you people that have responded, so thank you for your responses. So the, the answer to the question is that is one over three, same thing as one over three, well, you are going to use for these three points. Because I told you that the same thing as one over three, well, it approximates the function with a second order polynomial. And for second order polynomial, you need three points. So we have three points here. So definitely is the same thing one of our three rule we are going to use to evaluate this. Then from, from here to here, they have the same interval. So 0 0.36 minus 0 0.32 is 0 0.04. 0 0.04 minus 0 0.36 is 0 0.04. 0 0.44 minus 0 0.40 is 0 0.04. So they have the same interval. So I'm asking another question. What rule can we use to approximate the integral from this point to this point? There are four points. So what, what method can we use in between throughout all those points, what method can we use to approximate the integral? So I'm asking another question. Yes, is, yes, is the three over eight rule. Thank you for those people that responded. Is the three over eight rule because you have four points so it definitely is a third order polynomial and the third order polynomial is three over eight method we use. So from year to year is a trapezoidal rule. From year to year, you use the Simpsons rule. Then from year to year, from year to year, you will use the Simpsons one over three rule. Then from year to year, you use the Simpsons one, three over eight rule. Then from here to here, they have the same interval. 0 0.54 minus 0 0.44 is 0 0.1. 0 0.64 minus 0 0.54 is 0 0.1. So what method are you going to use to approximate the integral in between these three points? So I'm asking another question. So what method will you use to approximate the integral in between those three points. Yes, thank you for all those that responded is one over three rule. Thank you. Thank you for all those people that responded is one over three rule that you are going to use to approximate the value of the integral in between these three points because there are three points and for three points, you, you can use a second order polynomial. And the same thing one over three rule is a second order polynomial. So for this point and this point, they are just the interval, you have two points, and the interval is 0 0.06. So what rule can you use to approximate the integral between this and this? That's another question. Just two points, just given two points only. What rule can you use to approximate the integral in between these two points? So I'm waiting for responses from the class. Yes. So thank you. Thank you all for all those that responded. It's trapezoidal rule. So for two points, it's trapezoidal rule. Then for these two points, 
the interval is 0 0.1. So you just have two points. So the the way you can use to the method we use to approximate the int uh, uh, method we are going to use to approximate the integral is the trapezoidal rule also. So given by what we've just discussed, those first two points, we use the trapezoidal rule given by this formula. So the step size or the interval is 0 0.12. And when we do that, we arrive at this. So for the next three points, we are going to use the Simpsons 1 over 3 rule. So for the next three points, we use the Simpsons 1 over 3 rule. So this is the Simpsons 1 over 3 rule. For here, this is the upper limit, B. The upper limit is 0 0.32. And the lo lower limit is 1, 0 0.12. So that's why you have 0 0.32 here and 0 0.12 here. So the value of this function as x1, x2, and x3 is this. Then this is the result of the operation. Then between this point and this point, you have four points here. And they have the same step size of 0 0.04. So we're going to use Simpson's 3 over h rule to approximate it. So the lower limit is 0 0.44. The upper limit is 0 0.32. So that's why you have 0 0.44 and 0 0.32 here. Then this is the value of the function at these uh, values of x. And the result is given by 0 0.272. Then from here to here, you have the same step size of 0 0.1. So the difference between here and here is 0 0.1. The difference between here and here is 0 0.1. So we can use the same method, which is the 1 over 3 rule. So here's the 1 over 3 rule. The upper limit is 0 0.64. The lower limit is 0 0.44. So that's why we put 0 0.64 here and 0 0.44 here. Then we have evaluated the integral between those limits. Then from here to here, we use the trapezoidal rule. Then this is your B and this is your A. Then for, from here to here, we use the trapezoidal rule. So this is your B, this is your A. You cannot use the same since one over three rule for this because the step sizes or the intervals are not the same thing. So the interval between this and this is 0 0.06 and the interval between this and this is 0 0.1. So you can't use that. So you have to break it down. From here to here, you use a trapezoidal rule. Then from here to here, you use trapezoidal rule because they have different, they have an equal segment. So that's what we evaluated here. Uh, that's the evaluation here. So after doing all of this, after integrating over all of this, we will just add the results of the operations together and we arrive at this value. So when we track the error, we got an error of 2.2%. Uh, so the, uh, the methods we've considered so far, they are called the closed integration method because we are integrating within some specific limits. So they are called the closed integration methods. But for open integration methods, um, you are integrating beyond the range of, the, of data. So they are different, um, you use different approach in order to find the integration. So it's just a summary. We are not going deep into the, uh, into the methods like we did for the closed integration, the closed integration approaches. So we have for the for the open integration method, we have is just is kind of the same thing, but 
you have different formulas. That's for the open integration approaches. So this is the midpoint method. And this is the second other approximation. This is the third and this is the this is the first order approximation. This is the zeroth order approximation. This is the first order approximation. The second order polynomial approximation. The third order polynomial approximation and the fifth order polynomial approximation. So the methods, the Simpsons uh, method and the trapezoidal rule, they are for the closed integration approaches to getting the integration. So you have your limits and the limits are within the range of data. But for the open integration method, the limits are these limits, B and A, they go beyond the range of data that is given to us. So that is just the difference. So we as so here we've made use of uh, different approaches to finding the numerical integration um, using Excel VBE and using AMP solution. So we're going to move on to the next um, uh, the next topic, which is using MATLAB functions to finding the integration of uh, equations. So I'll end the meeting now.